All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, happy to be talking with an individual who has a big fight coming up on May the 7th at Bellator 258. We have Daniel Madrid getting out there with Johnny Eblen, and it should be a great middleweight bout, and I'm talking to Johnny right now. How's your day going so far there, man? Pretty good, man. Just uh, finished up my last uh, sparring day. Went really well. And just resting up and taking care of my body and ready to put on put on a show May 7th. Yeah, and you work with some amazing guys for sure. Like I've even seen on the Instagram working with guys like Jorge Masvidal and Antonio Carlos Jr. over at ATT there. I'm kind of curious who the specific guys you were sparring with just earlier today, though, and in a broader sense just for this camp. Um, so earlier today I was sparring with Dalton Rasta, and he's an undefeated middleweight uh, prospect in Bellator, and uh, Robin Feraldo, he's a welterweight prospect. He's undefeated as well, too. And then um, I've been working with Yarsov and Masav a lot this camp. And then also before George uh, had that uh, fought for the belt, uh, I was with him most of his, pretty much his, his whole camp. So those were my main training partners. I was training a little bit with uh, uh, Shoeface, but then he had to leave for the bubble for the PFL. But uh those are pretty much my main sparring partners right there, my main training partners. Yeah, and you also were kind of touching on the recuperation there, and I'm sort of curious to get the specifics on that because I was checking out the functional patterns exercises that you do there, which I imagine, you know, in the title, pays dividends to the functional strength and stuff like that. So can you kind of talk about the, I guess, functional strength and also the recuperation techniques you've been utilizing? Yeah, so uh, that is all about, you know, being as fundamental as possible when it comes to strength training. Um, so basically, their, their uh, theory is that since we're walkers, runners, and throwers, and standers as, as a species, that's what we do the most. Um, they orient their uh, their techniques around those things. So, um, I mean, you could just look at their Instagram page and see a lot of their the results they get. Um, obviously it goes a lot deeper than this. This is a very like general view to get someone to understand. Sure. But, uh, yeah, they kind of just think about the fundamentals of what, what makes a human being a human being. And, and they just try to abide by those principles. Um, also we, they, they take into account a lot of other things like diet and, uh, and light environment and, um, like things like uh, staying away from your cell phone and, and a bunch of other things, staying away from blue light, um, getting out in the sun more, making sure you're grounded, getting like earthing, aka earthing. Um, so it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big whole thing, but um, just the general aspect of it is um, basically the closest thing you can get to when it comes to training, like training a human, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. It just sounds cool because it has utility beyond just, you know, your competitive MMA career. It seems like it's a really great yeah, lifestyle it has, thing. It has utility if you're, if you're a human being, which is like the coolest part about it. And uh, they get results all across the board. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it sounds it, man. I appreciate you giving me the insights in that regard but you know i'd be remiss if i didn't you know get a little bit of backstory on the nickname here the korean canelo i think that's just an amazing nickname like what's the backstory on that yeah, one there that's not, my, that's not my nickname anymore though i've been i've been changing it every fight oh that's tight um yeah, this, so where did the... yeah this fight i'm going with diamond hands i, I recently got into crypto and uh I'm, I'm a i'm a i'm notorious for like spot buying and just holding holding through 30% corrections and, and not selling. So uh, on the crypto line, I guess the stock wall too, we call that diamond hands, not selling. The whole like uh, GameStop thing, I think, I think it kind of blew up. Um, so yeah, I'm all, about, I'm all about diamond hands, bro. No paper hands here. Yeah, definitely paper hands, not a descriptor I would use for you there. But you mentioned the cryptocurrency. Do you ever talk about that with, like, you know, Ben Askren, fellow University of Missouri alumni there? Like, do the Mizzou lads kind of chop it up about crypto? I don't really chop it up with Ben too much, honestly. Not too much. Uh, he's reached out to me uh, previously in my career about some opportunities with MMA, but um, ne never really 
also I, I went out and trained with T Wood uh, a couple of times, and I saw Ben out there, but uh, never really got to chop it up with him too much. But uh, man, he's uh, he's had an interesting career, uh, especially the last few you know few fights. But uh, I wish I wish him the best. I know he's coming off like a hip surgery and stuff. Uh, hopefully, he gets in the FB to fix to, to fix that. Yeah, truly an interesting kind of run with that individual there. But you were talking about the recuperation a bit before, and it seems like you made a big recovery from just some of the surgeries you got just well over a year back there. Like, So how was that whole recovery kind of experience? Because it seemed like there was initially some kind of you know peaks and valleys kind of dynamic with something like that. Like, How was the whole experience overall? Because it seems like your body has become galvanized and stronger than ever. Um, I guess I just adjusted a lot of my habits. And I've just did how I think just pretty much about everything. I try to be more mechanistic about my thinking. Um, I try to, every, every action I have, I have to have a utility. So every habit I have needs to be useful. And uh, like, let's say, like, in the morning, if I wake up every morning and I have a habit of, you know, drink a cup of coffee and sitting in front of the TV, that's probably not great for me in a recuperative standpoint as opposed to going outside drinking water and, you know, getting morning sun. So, like, it, 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 I could go down the list and tell you all these changes that I've made, but it starts with little things like that, little habits like that. Does this, like, utility-minded lifestyle change, like, is this a relatively recent addition in the last couple of years, or is this something you've been honing over the last few, or how long has that been going on? I've really settled into it uh, the past year, year and a half. Um, Nadia Aguilar, the, the CEO of Oak Shore Titans, kind of took me in and helped, helped guys help pave the way to fix me and solve my problems. So um, I kind of just uh, adjusted and, and used, used what was useful and made the adjustments, and I saw, saw pretty good uh, outcomes. So I just kept going, kept going, kept going, and next thing I know, I'm just getting healthier and healthier and healthier. So uh, obviously there's a lot more adjustments I need to make in the future and always going to be, you know, analyzing what's better. Um, but you, you get the gist of things. Yeah, and does that extend to, like, any particular, like, reading you do? Like, do you work with a sports psychologist? Like, how much does, like, how much is there, like, outside kind of influence as opposed to just you kind of doing it? I try to just do it myself. Um, no sports psychology, really. Um, I did, I did, a big, a big thing that got me into uh, mechanistic thinking was that the tyranny of words by Stuart Chase. That's a, that's a pretty good read. Um, also, I started reading about, like, you know, uh, why zebras get ulcers, or why zebras don't get ulcers. Um, what's another good one? The body electric. Um, yeah, just relative reads, in my opinion. Did you say the one book there was called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers? If so, that's a brilliant title. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Talks about, like, uh, stress response and balance of hormones and shit. It's, it's, I can go deeper into it. It's a, it's a lot. It's by Robert Sapowski. And uh, it's, a pretty, uh, it's a pretty awesome book. I actually need to, I need to get, I need to read it, read up on it again. I've uh, been a while, so I need to reread a couple books. Yeah, it might be something I add to my list there, man. But I'm kind of curious there, like if music is a big, I guess, inspiring factor when you're in the gym. Are there particular like artists or genres you gravitate towards, or do you kind of let other people at the gym grab the aux cord and handle that end of it? You're kind of fine with whatever. Dude, whatever Yarsaw puts on, I don't know what, what the fuck it is. <laughs> that shit is fire, bro. I don't know what it's some Ukrainian fucking techno, dubstep, like an underground shit. I don't know, it's dope. And I mean, it's not just that stuff. He, he, he plays some like classic rock shit and things like that. But uh, I let other people, you know, take the ox court sometimes. Sometimes I like to put my own shit in, but I'm a fan of like, like classic rock and then like 90s and early 2000s hip hop for sure. I'm, I'm a big fan of 50 Cent. Um, DMX, obviously, rest in peace. Um, who else? Let me think. Big fan of Pink Floyd, um, Led Zeppelin, Tom Petty. I have a pretty mixed genre. Um, I'll listen to some EDM here and there. I had a little phase when I, where I really liked EDM. 
But, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm just not a big fan of country music, to be honest. That's the only thing. I don't, or Screamo. I'm not a big fan of Screamo. Yeah, no, fair enough. I mean, I get the whole dynamic of, like, you're already kind of intense in the gym and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, why is this guy yelling? And why is the, you know, double kick going so fast here? So I, I can get why people aren't digging that in that context. Yeah. No, but that's uh, that's some good stuff, though, man. I mean, it's always good to jam your stuff, but it's it's cool that there's other people that are putting on cool stuff you can check out as well. And you mentioned this just a bit earlier, just in talking about the crypto. I was noticing something a few weeks ago where you were wanting Bellator to pay you in crypto for your next fight. Is that something you situated? Oh. No, I, I don't think, uh, since I have a contract, contract signed, I don't think it's really a, a possibility. But I think they need to start venturing into that. I mean, I, I know some uh, NFL players are getting paid with Bitcoin. Um, I mean, a- anything, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Cardano, I'll take that. I'll take, there's, there's a lot of cryptocurrencies that I'm really interested in. I'll take Link, Chainlink Spire. Um, but yeah, I just think it's, uh, I, I value that more over the U.S. dollar, to be honest. So I'd rather get paid uh in crypto and uh i don't know it doesn't take time for the money to clear it's a lot quicker it just makes more sense to me i think it's definitely the future yeah it seems like you're pretty deep into a lot of the blockchain kind of stuff nowadays like like what do you think about those nfts that have been popping up lately oh i need to read about those um but they seem very interesting and very cool um i don't have too much knowledge on them but uh I'm in this Discord that helps, like, it's not really advise me, it's more like a school, and uh, they, they talk about NFTs and stuff, and they have a whole NFT guide, I actually need to go over it, um, I haven't really taken my time out, out of my day to, to look, look into that, um, because I think the usefulness isn't that great, so I'm not too interested in it, I'm more interested into, like, things that have utility, so, I mean, it, maybe there is a utility for it, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not too 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 big on the NTFs yet. No, fair enough there, man. And just, you know, talking about the analytical mindset, I'm wondering, like, how that extends to, you know, doing tape study on your upcoming opponent here. Like, what have you picked up on with Daniel Madrid's stylistic proclivities? Or do you more allocate that kind of stuff to your coaches and whatnot? I'll leave it to my coaches, and I'll, I'll, I'll look. I'll see what some of their habits are. Um yeah, I mean, I don't want to give up the secret sauce. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I do a little bit of film study, not too much. I focus on, on, on perfecting my craft, and I kind of let my coaches uh, let me know what they see because, obviously, two, uh, two pairs of eyes are going to see two different things. So uh, we, we agreed on a lot of things, but there's a couple things that my coaches saw that I didn't see. There's a couple things that I saw that my coaches didn't see. So I think we have a really good game plan coming into this fight. Yeah, and I'm curious if this is, like, the kind of matchup you were looking for at this juncture in your career, just in as far as fighting a guy that's getting ready to step in there for his 25th pro fight. Sorry, you kind of cut out there. Oh, sorry, I was just saying, like, is this the sort of fight you're looking for in as far as you're competing with somebody who will be entering the cage for their 25th pro outing here? Yeah, I'm actually really interested. Uh, I was really interested in this fight. It's really got that... uh, of uh, Daniel Madrid, I, I looked him up. I'm like, okay, nice. Guys, I got the vet. A lot of fights, you know. Um, some pretty good wins, you know. Has a couple losses. Um, yeah, this, this is a, I think it's the next uh, step for me in my career to, to fight a guy like this. I thought that's a pass, but uh, things are still kind of happy. I fought Mauricio um, Alonso. Um, He's a vet. He had a lot of fights. He, he knocked out Kopp, Josh, Josh Koscheck. That was a good win for me. Um, then after that, I, I, I beat another fellow like uh, Up and and Taylor Thompson. So I think another guy that's like I'm not, well, he's 36, I think. Still, still kind of young. Still a vet. Had a lot of fights, experience, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a great match for me. I think so too, and one I'm definitely looking forward to here, but I also want to be mindful of your time and just the rest of your schedule here, man. So is there anything you'd like to sort of add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up here? Um, invest in crypto. Invest in your health. Look into SP. 
and we got functional patterns. You guys won't regret it. And that's about it, man. Shout out Bellator for employing me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a great card, Bellator 258, going down on May the 7th, a middleweight bout between Daniel Madrid and Johnny Eblen going down. And just appreciate you coming on the show and giving some insights ahead of this one, man. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of your night there. Yes, sir. You too.